Imagine this nightmare. Your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation is destroyed. What if last week your boss told you to delete the graph page that you spent two hours working on, but today your boss changed their minds and he wants it back in the next 15 minutes. Or Bella, your Maltese puppy stomped around on your keyboard without your knowledge. You saved and closed the doggy edited file. Bad puppy. The undo feature will not save you, but if you're running Office 365, version history to the rescue. Hi, this is Les from Power Training, and I will show you how to perform a miracle time travel to recover older data hiding in your file to fix all of these problems. This magic trick will only work on the paid version of Office 365 on either a Mac or Windows computer. Plus, you must be saving your work on Microsoft OneDrive or the cloud version of SharePoint. Let's do it. In this PowerPoint slide deck with nine slides, I will delete slide number four called a critical slide number one. Obviously, if this is a mistake, then a simple undo would bring it back. But if I close the file out and it is auto saving because I'm using Microsoft OneDrive, then the deleted slide will not be there when I reopen the saved file. And undo is no help. See the grayed out undo feature? That's because undo only works on the latest actions on an active open file. Once closed, the undo solution is gone. However, the job saving fix is to access version history, a hidden feature just waiting for you to discover. Click on the file name at the top of the PowerPoint window. Yes, right on the top of the document name, click. And in the drop down menu, you will see version history. For Mac OS users, the same action will show a slightly different menu layout. On the Mac, you click Browse Version History. And that description of Browse Version History is spot on because we can browse previously saved files or more accurately, saved historical versions to bring back lost data to life. Watch what happens on my Windows computer on the right side of the screen, I'm going to see that I have PowerPoint and it shows all the previous versions of the save changes. In my case, I created it and saved it. So I have two versions of the document to choose from. My currently working version plus one previous version. For this example, let's use the oldest version, the one before I deleted that slide and more on this in later. When it comes back and I switch over to the slide sorter view, we see all nine slides there, including that deleted critical slide number one. It's back, baby. Disaster averted, job saved. But we're not done yet. Note that the file is in read only mode. So we can either save it under a different name or restore it to the original name. This time around, I'm going to use restore and it's going to replace the version I was working on, the one with the deleted slide, with the recovered history version. There is no secondary file on my save folder. The restored version becomes my primary working canvas. <laughs> and don't worry if the older now restored version is missing more recently updated data, you can always use version history points in time to recover that data too. But don't go yet. There's some subtleties and tricks that you still need to learn. If you do leave, you risk finding out the hard way. Let me go back and make some radical changes to this presentation. Moving images, removing text, deleting text boxes, changing chart colors. Before we close the file, tip 
Number one, always look for the savings message at the top of the screen next to the name to be completed. Microsoft is good about saving before closing, but give it some time to make sure. Once saved, you exit and a revision version is recorded inside the main file. The version is for the completed editing session, which just ended as I closed the file. You can count on that, a captured version, as long as you're saving on the cloud on OneDrive. However, once reopened, the versioning points in time get a bit fuzzy. Yes, PowerPoint is saving version points in time while you're at it, but not every single time that you're touching your keyboard or applying enhancement. As you edit, PowerPoint will periodically create a version history. So during an editing session, you might be able to go back to an earlier point in time to retrieve your lost data. But no matter what, you can always go back to the most recently saved and closed version. And remember, when you open up a version history, it's opened up in read-only mode in a different window. So you could copy that older retrieved data back to your active workspace. And this can be advantageous when compared to undo. The undo feature just walks you back in time, one step at a time, removing items and actions incrementally with each undo actions. While the version history may be a more surgical restoration, find and retrieve only the changed data. Which brings us to tip number two. Consider saving the restored versions as a new file with a new name. Just for my recently Havoc rec presentation, when I bring it back up, it's a mess. So one strategy is to retrieve an earlier version, but this time, instead of restoring the currently working file, I elect to do a file and save as, where I give it a new name. At this point, I now have two files. First, the original with the errors all holding my historic changes over time. And secondly, my newly saved file with a new name and with a version history that is now starting all over again. But look, I'm still missing the one slide called a critical slide number one. That's not a disaster. It may be inconvenient, but I can go back to my original files and look through the version histories to find and recover the lost data, or in this case, the one lost slide. Copy it back over, and once again, whoo, job saved. Tip number three, version history file naming. It can be a lifesaver, especially on long and complex slideshows. If it is a super, super critical or time intensive creation process, I recommend periodic file versioning by hand, meaning that you perform a save as and then append the text such as versions two or 2.1 or some other numbering system to the end of the file name. Now you're gonna have a permanent new file version to go back to with each newly saved as a file holding not just your designated point in time, but also the ongoing internal version histories built in, little micro increments inside the larger file versions, except to the detriment of disk space and more files to manage. You can't have too many backups for important files. Lastly, as of October, 2023, PowerPoint lacks the detailed review feature found in Word and Excel's employment of version history. Subscribe and check out those tutorials to see those enhancements. Or to explore more about this drop-down dialog box, check out this tutorial on one-click renaming and moving of Office files 
without having to leave your document. Until next time, go power up. <laughs>